I want to thank you so much for taking the time today to watch online the service. Uh, I am really excited about this morning and uh, what we're going to be able to talk about. Uh, this has been a very difficult season for all of us that we have been walking through. I mean, the coronavirus has taken its toll on many of us physically, emotionally, relationally, financially, uh, and it, it's just been exhausting. And I've talked to many people who we've just been so bent up and tight as a result of what's been going on with the coronavirus. And now we as a country are facing incredible unrest as the result of the tragedy surrounding the death of George Floyd. And it seems like us as, as individuals and as people in this community and around the world that we're being uh, wound tighter and tighter and tighter and we're just about to explode. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with the anger that we may feel, the, the fear, the anxiety? Uh, how do we deal with the relational disconnect that is going on around us? That's what we're going to look at this morning, and I'm, I'm really excited and glad because we have some wise counselors who we've asked to come and to be a part of a discussion this morning, and they're all very passionate about God and passionate about helping people who are hurting. And so we're just going to have a time to talk about this in the context of a biblical framework. So... It is Wednesday evening, guys, and uh, we're here not even knowing what the rest of this week is going to entail and be like. Um, and we want to spend some time, as we said, just to uh, kind of talk about this and how we can handle life. But I want to begin by just taking a brief moment and kind of us going around and introducing uh, ourselves because people may not know who you guys are. So Matt, why don't you start us out and... Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. My name is Matt Gallagher. I'm a therapist at Restoration Counseling and Consultation <clears throat> just across the parking lot here from the church. Um, I've been a therapist for a little over 10 years now, and it's my privilege to walk beside people with a variety of processes, with emotions. <clears throat> um, it's something I feel called to. Uh, my wife Lori and I have been married uh, over 25 years, and our two daughters, Maddie and Gracie, uh, we spent a lot of time together over the last few weeks and months, um, and they work with us in the office at different things too. I'm glad to be here. I'm Connie Suderman, and I've been a member of this church for uh, a little over 10 years. We've lived in Wichita, and it's been our privilege to be a part of this group, but I'm a counselor at Creative Family Counseling. Um, and I've been doing that for just under 30 years. So I've enjoyed also walking along with people in their journeys. Um, you know, life is a journey. So it's a privilege to come alongside and help people as they try to gain perspective, figure out what tools they can take along the way. So uh, it's my privilege to be here this evening and to talk more about this. I am married to my husband, David. We have three kids and a daughter-in-law and a lovely grandson with another one on the way. So, awesome. yeah, so glad to be here. Mark Olsey, uh, marriage and family counselor for the last th 35 years mm -hmm. and uh, married almost 39 to my wife named Zarin. Her mm -hmm. name means golden sunshine and she is mm -hmm. that for me. I love her to death and we got three kids and uh, a number of more who we get the privilege of being like a mom and dad to. So we're, we are really blessed and really thankful. Uh, and uh, I do marriage and family counseling and private practice, like I think I mentioned that. Um, and I've had the privilege of being the brother of John Olsey for uh, 54, 56 years. Uh, so you, you all have had him for eight years. I've had him for 50, 56 years. It's been, been great. I love this guy. Thanks for having us, John. Yeah. <clears throat> Just don't tell any bad stories about me. No bad stories. <laughs> All right, guys, as we started talking a couple of weeks ago about doing this evening together, um, we, we kind of landed on uh, this idea that, that we really want to make sure that we are developing a culture of doing life as a family, mm. that we're not supposed to be doing life like we're living on an island alone, but that we are walking through whatever we're facing 
uh, with others together. Uh, I wondered if one of you might want to just speak into that for just a brief moment as we kind of dive into this tonight. You know, John, it's uh, Jesus who set the best example on how we do community, and that's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here as a church, you know. He created the environment that allows us to do life together and gives us that option and showed us the way. And so even when we face adversity, it's, it's a, uh, an important part of being a family if we can talk about it, if we can provide tools to one another that work for us, if we can speak and write and engage and um, pray together and all the things that we need to do individually to do that together as a group to allow us to have the opportunity to see it through, you know and to find our strengths through it. And uh, an example of, of, of where uh, family became so real is in the story of Ruth and Naomi, when they uh, were, found themselves in a whole nother space, you know, because of uh, something that was much bigger than them, famine in the country, people who were hurting, um, and they, they clung to each other. And the Bible's very clear about how they held each other. They cried together the emotions and the humanity of it is written in the story in Ruth. So if you get a chance to go look at that, to see how did they handle the adversity that was a part of their life during that time, and to see that God took them through it together. There was a plan that they could engage the steps and the difficulties together with, a, with an outcome that was God's intention. And that's true for us today. There's an intention in what we go through, and there's something that will come out of even the worst of tragedies in every in every difficulty there's opportunity and so it's a matter of where we place our trust and how we engage the tools that we have along you know i referred to the journey the moving of life and to know that it's not isolated today what we're experiencing it's a part of a bigger picture and the panoramic view the journey itself is something that's important to be aware of as we go through to know that god has a plan that we can do it together and that there are tools to help us to do it together and to find ways to love in the process and give grace and to listen and to engage this as the Christians that, uh, you know, that Jesus emulated, you know, in his walk, the people, the way he loved, the way he had grace, the way he listened, in spite of fear, in spite of anxiety, in spite of what we personally experience, we can be a part of the greater community so, so let's let's. I want to just dive right into that because yeah. when we were talking again, we had three themes that we kind of all said this is important that we address in in facing what we're going through right now. And the first one was anger. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, you know, I, I want us to look at that. James chapter one tells us, you know, that we're to be quick to listen, slow to speak slow to become angry. Ephesians chapter four says that we're to get rid of all anger. We're to be kind and compassionate. How do we do that, manage that right now in the reality of what we are feeling and facing? How do we deal with that? I'm also reminded of the verse that <clears throat> in our anger not to sin. Mm -hmm. Anger is a healthy emotion. Mm -hmm. And if we're made in God's image, God had anger. <clears throat> but one of the ways that we manage that is by separating our feelings that are undeniable and we don't really get to control. They come up. We need to honor those. It changes when it becomes behavior. And what's interesting, our anger, it's an authentic emotion, but often it's secondary. Often anger, in, in some ways it actually helps us. Uh, it's when we talk about a fight or flight response, there's the fight in that or or the flight where we'll run faster but we'll fight harder it's energizing one one uh some people think that angry is one of the healthiest ways that we can be sad and as long as it's not destructive there's some truth in that it energizes me to do things it mobilizes but it also destroys what connie described to maintain community is especially important because we have to choose that for some of us our anger repels people in my personality i will withdraw um that's an impulse it's not healthy i have to consciously reach out in other people's personality they'll use anger to control or push people away uh, or bring them close and control so anger is 
a pretty important warning sign that I'm in distress, that we are in distress, and we're either trying to prevent something from happening or make something else happen. Anger is a healthy feeling that we need to feel, but really be careful about how we act on it. So it's not necessarily, I, I don't have to feel bad if I'm getting angry. It's what I do with that anger at that time yeah. is where it gets to be tricky. Yes, and it's also important to look for the other emotions in that. I'm not just usually angry. Is there some fear that I'm feeling? Mm -hmm. Is there something I'm worried about or something I'm sad about? Mm -hmm. Is the anger mm -hmm. covering or trying to protect me from some other emotion? I think of a couple things right now because um, there's a lot of anger mm -hmm. uh, in our country. Uh, someone you know, said over the weekend, I heard that uh, they, they were saying that w w they were concerned that we were going to move to be uh, a world that's in, in fear to a world that's in anger. Mm -hmm. and, and almost overnight, that's taken place mm -hmm. uh, in our own country and now other places in the world as well. Uh, anger is, 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 is being evidenced and so forth in, in, in many ways. And it is something we all experience, uh, and it is something we all have to deal with in our own lives individually and, and, and in the world around us. Um, and I think it's important, uh, Matt, that we, um, we recognize, again, it is an emotion that is healthy, and at the same time, uh, what do we do with it? Sometimes we can harness it for good, and other times it can be controlling of us yes. and cause great harm. Uh, and, and, and why we need to learn how to uh, not um, let it be controlling, uh, not let anger be unbridled, uh, and, uh, and that, that takes some effort, that takes some uh, uh, work on, on every one of our parts individually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I've heard it said that, <clears throat> that whenever there's anger, there is always something beneath that. You know, and so what we need to work on is when we're angry is to, pro is to be thinking through and mm -hmm. processing what is going on beneath that anger mm -hmm. that I need to deal with and that I need to understand yeah. how to process and move forward. It's like connecting the you dots. Know? Yeah, mm -hmm. connecting the dots uh, there. Uh, and, and, yeah. and sometimes, like Matt, you were saying, it can be connected, uh, be a secondary kind of a thing. Uh, I'm thinking also, as you're saying, John, other things. Uh, sometimes uh, an anger is because we're wanting life to go a certain way and it's not. And when it doesn't go our way, we're angry. Mm -hmm. Another thing is anger comes about as a result of being wronged. And when we're feeling wronged, we're angry. And I think that's a, so much of the type of anger we're experiencing today around us in our country. There, there has been this huge uh, 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 of, uh, uh, wrong done and, and, and has awakened or, or brought about, again, in so many people's hearts and minds, uh, wrongs that have been done in our country, one towards another, and this anger has just erupted because of, because of the wrong being done. That also loops back into our expectations, and because there is righteous anger. That's Jesus in the temple. Hmm. This is wrong, and I'm going to stop it. But it loops into our expectations of what we're afraid of, and the idea that... <clears throat> Sometimes our anger tries to, like you alluded to, tries to bring about control. Mm. And control is an illusion. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's so much that we don't control. Mm. And when we find some sense of acceptance in that, I can't control this. Mm -hmm. It changes my expectations. And sometimes it lets the, lets the air out of my anger. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's less mm. outrage in that. There's an acceptance that I don't have a control. And so yes. there's an acceptance of... Um, I have that I have to, in a sense, accept, even accept yes. mm -hmm. that um, that I'm not in control. Absolutely. And ultimately, we would say is mm -hmm. that someone else is. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and, mm -hmm. and 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 gain some level of uh, coming back to, to the center point, mm -hmm. in, 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 if, if if you will, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, the, 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 for us as followers of Christ, someone yes. else is in control. And mm -hmm. and and what does that mean? Uh, for us, and, and not only trusting in that, but what does that mean in as we live out? our lives here on earth with, uh, and that's the choice to trust in God's plan that you were alluding to mm. at the right. beginning and there are tools that we have too mm. uh, that we can employ to help us as we process where is this anger coming from mm -hmm. what are the feelings that I have because it's common mm. to humanity to have all those emotions as you mm -hmm. said Matt and you said Mark 
<clears throat> meeting that we can find ways to address them. We can talk like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. We can talk about what is this, what's common, how do we deal with it. We can write, we can journal our experience so that we can look at it in black and white and make sense out of what's happening in the fog of our thoughts mm -hmm. and our emotions. We yeah. can go for walks, you know, and get the physical energy out. We can run, we can have all kinds of ways to very in healthy ways cope with and deal with all of the emotions that God has given us because we have that responsibility but also that privilege and we can engage in in, in um, hoping and praying that even ahead of all the rest to pray that God will help us to be a part of positive change or to influence what's happening around us for for how we see God wanting us to participate personally as groups, as families, communicating yeah. with our children. So there's a lot we can do, tools we can employ that we take with us on our journey and we apply them over and over and over again to different situations. And sometimes it's like you're walking into a wind when you're dealing with anger. It's pressuring, it's <laughs> difficult, but we, we have to use the same things that we take <laughs> on a normal walk. We just press harder, yeah. we do it more. And right now is a do it more time. Mm. For sure. Mm. Still have to live life. Still have to push through. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And it's okay. Mm. It's not. It's harder. It's not. Not that I'm. Not that I'm just going to be okay. I'm fine. It's, exactly. The, the wind is blowing. Exactly. And, and, and yeah. With anger, mm -hmm. with anxiety, the wind is blowing, mm -hmm. and 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 we feel it. It's still there. I still feel it. Mm -hmm. I was aware of it coming here tonight. Just that, 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 those feelings. Yeah. And we still have to move through. Mm -hmm. Still have to live. Still have yeah. to push through, and and uh, yeah. A wise person once said, "We're made to do hard things." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Wow, mm -hmm. I, there's so much that uh, you know was said here that I I, I just I'm like, wow, I want to remember that because just this reality of God, it, we we're out of control, mm -hmm. and that causes a lot of anger. Holy cow, we have, as believers and followers of Christ, we have a hope that God is still there. I mean, I don't know how people who are not followers of Christ, how they make it through these difficult times. You know, I mean, because we can come up with strategies of things to do to, to, to help you to not be angry. But without that hope of Christ, man, I, it's just crazy. I don't know how we, how we make it through, you know. Um, Let's let's move on to the second theme that we kind of talked about because it 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 was already mentioned in in our conversations here and that is that sometimes you know our, our anger what is beneath that anger is fear or anxiety and that is a, a huge reality for us uh, you know I mean I, I like I want to get done with the recording here and get home because of potential riots of that might be going on you know and, and I want to mm -hmm. I want to be safe and you know and, and uh, man the Twitter was has, was going nuts last night with people and mm -hmm. and just you know uh, people are fearful people are filled with anxiety how do we live with that reality I mean Matthew 6 says listen don't don't worry about tomorrow it's it'll mm -hmm. take care of itself each day has trouble of its own, so don't worry about tomorrow. But how do we, in this season with COVID and, you know, I mean, when, mm. when things do get a little bit more back to normal and the rioting is over and so forth, you know, and we start focusing again, oh yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic and all these people have been together, who knows what that's going to do, mm -hmm. you know? So how do we deal with mm. all this fear and anxiety that people are facing and that social media just... Mm -hmm. Escalates. How, how do we deal with that? If, if, as I was saying a minute ago, if uh, anger, if one of the reasons we experience anger is because we we want something to happen a certain way and it doesn't, and we experience anger, anxiety. One of the ways we can explain it, the re the result of it, is we want something to happen a certain way and we're not sure it's going to. We want to be safe. We're not sure it's going to. Uh, we're, we're going to be. We, we, we want the, the pandemic to, to, to go away. We don't know how long it's going to last. We want the rioting and everything else to calm down. We don't know sure, sure if it is. So there's this uncertainty which breeds anxiety. So what do we do? Interesting when you say in Matthew it says, uh, let tomorrow worry about its own. 
there's this sense in which, mm. oh, so I'm not to worry about tomorrow. So in, there's a sense in which I'm then, in a sense, to kind of pull back and say, okay, so there's today. So today is what I need to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, not tomorrow, but it's today. It's a, it's a pullback, in a sense. And one of the things that, that uh, uh, struck me uh, uh, when the, the COVID thing started, I, I, I saw a post on Facebook, and uh, a friend of mine said, um, you know, ph cell phone, uh, New Testament. And he said, what if we, uh, as often as we looked at this thing, the cell phone, we pulled this out instead, uh, the New Testament. As often as we checked this, we checked this. As often as we uh, wrote something in here, we would write or something about this. And they compared about 10 different things. And I was really convicted. I was like, oh, that was really good. And I literally pulled my New Testament out. I started carrying along with my, with my phone. And literally every time throughout the day I, I checked this, or I was about to, I opened this up and checked this out. And what happened is for me is I began memorizing scripture like I haven't done since I was a boy. Hmm. Because, and, I, and, and one of the things I turned to was Psalm 23. I memorized that as, as a boy, and I've memorized that as, as in the last few weeks again. And I'm telling you, um, it has actually really made a difference. Mm -hmm. But it only makes a difference when I pull back and, and do some honest reflection on it. And I wonder so often, is we've, as, as believers, we, uh, we, we hear all kinds of scripture, we read the Bible in a year and all this kind of stuff, but how much of it do we really know to the point mm -hmm. where it changes our lives? And one of the things is, in, for me, has been Psalm 23, even just the very beginning, the Lord is my shepherd. We have a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He is. There's the present tense. I shall not want. He mm -hmm. makes me lie down in green pastures. Leaves me besides still waters, restores my soul. If I could just work on that even part. And I really contemplate it. Think about it. There's a peace that comes over. Not because I'm somehow able to reach out and control my world. That I can't but because I remember as a follower of Christ, someone else is in control and I begin, I can begin to rest in that and my anxiety begins to mm -hmm. dial down. This is a great example of where I don't feel any competition between my, my discipline, my training, and, and what scripture reveals because I love that, that Jesus emphasized let uh, tomorrow is enough trouble of itself and in so many treatment approaches, there's been this surge of mindfulness and mindful awareness. Yeah, yeah. Because when I focus on today, <clears throat> I can handle the next hour of Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. If I spin too far into the future, that's actually where anxiety lives. Anxiety is worried about what things are going to happen in the future. And the other thing that we, um, there's been research into the impact of environmental traumas. And if we think about just the toll it takes from all the mental energy of thinking what have I touched and am I clean and where have you been like we're literally more tired as well mm. so what's interesting I'm out of gas because my brain is tired because it's being used in a much more deliberate way and I'm being it's almost like we're being pinged with fear let alone if you check your phone that much but we're being pinged with all the fear. I always remember when my kids watched that movie, The Crudes. We watched that years ago, and the caveman dad, his theme was never not be afraid. <laughs> That's a terrible way to live. Yeah. And, and recognizing that I can survive this moment, mm. and I can't control what's coming in the future, <clears throat> but I will choose to trust that I'll find a solution for it. Um, there's peace in that. Mm. There's a lovely devotional written by Stormy O'Marsh and many years ago, I don't even know if you can get it in print anymore, yeah. but the name of it is Just Enough Light for the Step I'm On. Mm -hmm. And wow. applying good. the reality that God it doesn't ask us to scale mountains all at one time. This time we're in is like a mountain that we face, uh, but we can do it one step at a time. We can scale yeah. back, lean back, and, and take time count to 10 before we take the step and say, what can I see right now? How can I move within the, the amount of vision I have with the light that I have now? And it's biblical there too that, you know, that Jesus talks about how he provides that light of, on our steps. We have our, we have our plans, but it's the Lord who directs our steps. So we can bring ourselves back, yeah. take a deep breath and know that I just have to take this step. 
-hmm. I don't have to know what the next step is or the next step or the next step, but I can focus here. We have a shepherd who knows the next step. Exactly. And, and literally, my, my concern is, can we take the word and make it extremely, literally practical mm -hmm. so it affects me, even my anxiety. We all have anxiety, but is there a way we can take the scripture in truth and actually apply it in such a way that it literally can bring calm? Changes us from the inside. Yeah. Takes every thought captive, right? Yeah. And in Thank Psalms, you. Psalms 4, there's a verse that talks about only in, in the, uh, when David was running and hiding from Saul, and he said, um, I can lay down and I can sleep because mm. my safety's found yeah. in God mm -hmm. yeah. alone. Yeah. Not that our Christian walk in faith is, is a duties thing, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to do this sort of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But yet a very real, honest, practical application to how to just help us all breathe a little bit easier and calm and relax and, mm -hmm. and not be so fear ridden or anxiety ridden is that that practice of engagement with God is mm -hmm. is that solo time with God and you know I, I mean when I don't do that Linda can tell when I'm not you know yeah. it's like in 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 I have found recently, be, I, I just have become so busy with everything going on that 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 has kind of wandered away. And and when that does, uh, you know, the, the past couple of, uh, probably the past week, I've been just focusing on Psalms, <laughs> ironic, but, um, and, and I just found it amazing because, uh, again, it, it just, everything just dials down a little bit, you know? And it's like, I'm able to just kind of relax a little bit and go, okay, God, You've got this. You're you're in control, and and I can breathe a little bit better that way, and walk through that. So, um, we're we're really flying through some several key things here that are important, and we could spend hours on each of these, uh, and and maybe we'll have have that opportunity another time. But uh, I want to end tonight with with a little bit of time that we have left, just scratching the surface of one more theme, and that is relationships. And how do we handle conflict? How do we handle relationships that are going on? I know couples that are going like, I've been together way too much and I, I just need some space away from my spouse. Or, you know, I love my kids, but give me a break, you know, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. How do we handle, uh, really quickly here, how do we handle dealing with uh, the relational conflict, relational issues that are surfacing? And it's handle that in like 30 seconds, you know, yeah. no problem. <laughs> it's... <clears throat> It's hard to be in a fight when we practice grace and acceptance, mm -hmm. when we're compassionate with how each person has different needs. Mm -hmm. So when we recognize that, okay, you need more time to calm and to restore your peace, and you need to do that alone, or you need some encouragement and affirmation, and you need me here with you to do that. Um, most of our conflict in relationship comes from when I need you to act a certain way to fulfill my needs. We're each responsible for our own needs. Mm -hmm. um, and we can hear that in cues, because it usually starts with something like, why won't you just, and then the control comes in. So if we're gracious with one another and recognize that your tank is filled by something different than my tank, and you don't have to be like me, and I don't have to be like you, that's, that's the many parts of the body. And that's grace, I mm -hmm. think. That's good. Very good. There are, there are some parameters we can use uh, that would, would help. For example, like you're talking about having grace, uh, assume best intent. Yeah. yeah. When we're talking mm -hmm. to people, uh, mm -hmm. assume that their intentions are for good. Mm -hmm. uh, speak without belittling language. Mm -hmm. uh, give people the ability to walk away if they need a break. Not forever, that person can come back and in fact it'd be their responsibility to come back and say, hey, I'm ready to try again. But to give the space so that we don't pile up more and never get to it. Um, listen, we need to be people who are willing to listen and to just hold our comments and hold what we have to say and just hear and just listen to what's being said and sometimes just as a gift almost hold it. It's not what we do with it, it's how we hold it. We'll put. That's good, good, good. That's yeah. good. Conflict is a very real part of all of our lives. Yeah. Uh, it, it just is. And if we can learn and understand that they're actually 
our ways. We can uh, have conversations over our differences rather than fights and arguments. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can uh, find uh, some real um, health to our relationships too. Something I teach is a process called pledge. Mm -hmm. uh, John can put that in the footnotes or something if you want. Yeah. But there, there actually is ways that we can sit down and converse. And, and, I wanna, and, and, and it starts off with pausing and listening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pausing, realizing, okay, uh, I have to realize what happened uh, is, is th there's two sides and I have to be able to be willing to listen to your side as well. Mm -hmm. And if we can do that, learn to do that, and in that sense, Matt, give each other grace. We've got a great start yeah. in the process of being able to dialogue well mm -hmm. through our differences. Yeah. Guys, we are out of time. Uh, I, I just want to, again, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, so much uh, just relationally and the connections that we have mm -hmm. and I've enjoyed this time of interaction here tonight um, if, if I want to wrap up and say just give us an anchor point mm -hmm. one thing really briefly uh, and, and so you got like literally 15 30 seconds to do this okay for me the anchor point is hope that our hope is in Christ as followers of Christ we, we have this hope that this isn't all there is, hmm. and that heaven is coming someday. Hmm. How about for you, Matt? Um, I would challenge everyone to be kind to themselves and support others in being kind. If God is love, then that's one of the ways that we practice that acceptance and grace. Hmm. Take care of ourselves and help others take care of themselves. I would say to remember that we are a part of a much greater community who has experienced trauma and uh, challenge and safety and um, the things that we're seeing at our front door. Many people in our family, world family, have experienced it for centuries. And so we need to remember too to think about all of us as a part of something bigger and that God has a plan. And, and we're it's okay that we have all those emotions. It's okay that we're human. He created us to be. But we can work at it together. Mm. Kind of just jumping on that, yeah. the idea of the community and so forth. Again, one thing we didn't say, John, that I wanted to say was just as a final point, the idea that not only are we, that we our own families and church family, a community experiencing all these things, but outside of our door, literally outside of my, my door, my neighbors, yeah. are experiencing anxiety and anger as well and somehow somewhere some way uh, we need to be wrestling with these concepts ourselves so that we might indeed be able to be a light to them and just go over there and oftentimes as we just talked about just be willing just to listen to them in their anxieties, their concerns, um, and literally ask questions. We have to, it's like I go out into the world and have questions, have the awareness others are struggling too, and then, and then have questions even prepared that we could say, hey, w w what is life like for you? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then being a listener. And in, even just in our listening, we're, we're, we're presenting, a, 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 I think bringing the presence of Christ um, and, uh, and obviously praying for other doors to share and stuff too. But just the presence of someone who cares, is compassionate about the world around us, outside of our doors, exactly. I think that's a huge point to remember as well. Which, which Thank you. Was, is, a, is a perfect segue back to what Brent talked about this past Sunday mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, on how to be a follower of Christ and what does that mean and how to share your faith mm -hmm. with those around you and, and those that we come in contact with each day. And if you're watching this video we we i said it a couple times and i know these the rest of these guys all agree with me that the 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 biggest anchor that we all need is a relationship with jesus and if you have never crossed that line of faith and said jesus i believe in you i'm trusting in you for life and i'm, I'm placing my faith in you if you've never done that i want to encourage you to do that right now it's, you can just simply say, Jesus, I'm tired of trying to make life on my own. I believe you died on the cross for me to offer me a way to experience real life now and heaven someday. And if you just thought those thoughts right now, the Bible tells us the reality that you will experience uh, greater joy now, but even the greatest joy of heaven someday. And so I hope that you will do that.
Uh, listen, I hope that you'll connect with us next Thursday for Midweek Rewind. Uh, we will be uh, kind of rehashing this with a couple of these guys here. And uh, if you want to talk further with a counselor, is something spurred inside you as we were dialoguing tonight, uh, I want to encourage you just to email me. You'll see the, my email address on the screen. We have vetted several counselors who are passionate for Jesus and who are very committed to helping people who are walking through life. And so we'd love to be able to help connect you with somebody. And so if you would like to do that, please feel free to email me, all right? Hey, uh, just a reminder that we'll continue to have our services online, but June 28th is coming when we're gonna open up here live on Sunday mornings as well as being online. So I hope to see you soon. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks again so much for joining us today. As we wrap up today, just a couple quick reminders for you that every Monday at noon, we have what we call Monday worship. So for one hour on Mondays from noon to one, you're welcome to join us live in our worship center, or you can also watch live on our Facebook or YouTube channel for an hour of just kind of personal introspective worship and prayer time. We'd love to have you join us, whether you choose to come in person or watch online. And then Thursdays at noon, we have a show on Facebook that we call the Midweek Rewind. So every Thursday at noon from noon to 1230, we go live on the Facebook page to talk a little bit more detail about the previous week's sermon. And we also take your questions live. So if you'd like to go a little bit deeper, we'd love to chat with you. And if you can't watch live, you can also watch later or download the audio podcast. And the best way for us to stay connected is for you to subscribe to our email newsletters. We send out an all church email every Thursday. Plus we have some more specific uh, emails for kids or students, men and women. So we'd love to stay connected with you there. If you're not currently getting our emails, we invite you to go to firstdemetriochurch.org slash subscribe and sign up today. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next week.